Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N R Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 605, 604 rather. Please turn to it, page number 604. The very first problem that you will see there, number 15, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can get hold of me by sending me a simple email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at number 15. In number 15, we're given a rectangular prism uh, whose dimensions are 30 centimeter, 40 centimeter, and 50 centimeters. We're given the density. The question is, what's the mass of this prism? Let's find out, shall we? Mass is simply going to be density times the volume. Density is 2.8 gram per cubic centimeter. And this is where the cubic centimeter is going to cancel out by this cubic centimeter. Centimeter times centimeter times centimeter times 30 times 40 times 50. And then centimeter times centimeter times centimeter, as I just said, is centimeter cube. And centimeter cube drops out. And then we just have to figure out the math. 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 times 5 is 60. Pay attention, this is where this is where people are likely to make a mistake. One more time, 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 times 5 is 60, and then we have three zeros. 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. So it's 60,000 times 2.8, approximately 3. We're looking at something around 180,000. Answer is D. Answer is D. As you look at the answer choices, all the other answer choices are ridiculous. Answer choice C is 16,800 for those people who miss one zero. If you make a mistake here, instead of saying 60,000, you end up saying 6,000, you'll end up picking answer choice C. Pay attention. Make sure you pay attention. There are three zeros here. One, two, and three. Number 16, the next one. In the next one, we have a group of 100, we have a group of 300 people and they are given, they are, they are part of an experiment. They are part of an experiment and whenever, the, whenever these uh, scientists perform experiment, they, they break the groups into two halves, two equals, and one is called the control group, and control group is the one that is not given the treatment. One half gets the treatment, the other half gets the what is known as the placebo. And these are the figures. 21 people who got the vitamin C got cold out of 150. 129 did not. 117 people did not get a cold who, who got the placebo. And 33 people got cold who got placebo. The question simply is, what are the odds? What proportion? So let me first write it down. It says what proportion of people who received placebo got cold. This is what is known as a conditional probability. It is a conditional probability and the condition is that we are only dealing with the people who receive placebo. The people who receive placebo are this bottom half. These are the 150 people that we are interested in. And in terms of probability, in terms of uh, mathematical language, this is how we write it. What are the odds? What proportion which is saying? What are the odds? What's the probability? What are the odds? We write it like this. P stands for probability. What's the probability that if I were to pick one person at random among these 300 people, who, among the among these 150 people rather who receive placebo. Placebo part is, a, is a, the condition. What are the odds that if I were to pick one person at random among these 300, that that person got cold, that person got cold. One more time. What are the odds that if I were to pick one person among these 300, not 150, among these 300 people, if I were to pick one person at random, that that person got cold, 
given the fact that he was given placebo. As soon as you say that part, as soon as we put that condition, we are no longer dealing with all 300 of them, we are only dealing with 150. And it's very simple. How many people got called? 33 people got called out of total of 150. We just have to reduce it, divide top and bottom by 3, and we end up with 11 over 50, 11 over 50 is the answer. That's it. Just divide top and bottom by 3. That's all. And what would have happened? What would have happened if the exact same question, exact same phrasing, exact same wording, exact same question, but when you look at the answer choices, the answer choices are all stated in percentages. Because it says what are the odds? It, it expresses the probability. What are the odds that if I were to pick one person at random among those who were given placebo, that that person has a cold? And the answer choices are in percentages. What do you do then? The work so far will remain the same, obviously. Works will remain the same because it's the same figure, same everything. At the end, you end up finding that it's 11 over 50. And since the answer choices are listed in percentages, and percent we know means out of 100, just convert the bottom into 100. Multiply top and bottom by 2. Now we end up with 22 over 100. And the odds are 22%. Odds of picking such a person is 22%. Among the 150 people who receive, among the 150 people who receive placebo, the odds are 22% that that person will get cold. Number 17. Number 17. Let's start number 17 a little bit on the top, so that we have a little bit more room. In number 17, we have age here, and we have frequency here. We have 18, 19. 20, 21, 22, 23, and finally 30. And we have 6542, 6542, and then 111. So we have, we have for these 20 people. It says the table above shows the distribution of ages of 20 students at a certain college in a class, in a certain college class. Which of the following is the correct order of mean, median, and more? They just want us to arrange in proper order, the mean, median, and mode. This time is something simple. Something simple would be the mode. Mode, as we know, is the most frequently appearing figure. The figure that appears most frequently is this figure right here. Because there are six of there are six people who are 18 year old. The mode here is 18. Mode here is 18. Let's move on. Median is the middle number after the numbers have been arranged in order, either either in ascending order or descending order. Here we have 20 observations. We do not have odd number of observations. We have even number of observations. We have 20 observations. So median, median is simply going to be, median is simply going to be the average of the 10th observation and the 11th observation. Well. There are six people who are 18 year old, five people who are 19 year old. We already have 11 people all the way up to here. So the tenth person, when they arrange, you know, 18, 18, 18, 18, six of them, and then 19, 19, 95 of them, the tenth person in that order, tenth person in that order is going to be 19 year old, and so is the eleventh, and so is the eleventh person. So the average of 19 and 19 is just 19. So the median here is 19. So very first thing we establish is that, very first thing we establish is that the mode is less than the median. Let's see if there is anything that we can cross out at this point. Mode is less than the median. We can cross out answer choice C. C, C says just the other thing. C says the median is less than the mode. C is not right. Let's move on to mean. Let's see what we can do about the mean. What you have to understand about the mean is that when you want to find the average of so a certain group of numbers, listen very carefully, okay? It doesn't matter how many observations you have, it makes no difference how many entries you have, whether you have 20 observations as it is here, or whether you have 20,000 observations or 20 million observations, mean of a group of numbers can never ever be lower than the lowest number. Because if 18 year old is the youngest person, these six people here, other than those six people, the remaining 14 people are more than 18 year old, they're all pulling the average up. The mean here, whatever it is, has to be more than 18. 
Similarly, mean can never be higher than the highest number of 50, but you're not, you're not worried about that. So mean we know is more than 18, mode we know is 18, which means mean, mean here is more than mode. Because mean is more than 18, we don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's more than 18, and mode is 18. Let's see if they can cross out anything else. Uh, mean, mean is more than, oh, there you go, answer choice D is wrong. D says just the opposite. Now the reason why I crossed out this one like that and this one like that, that's just my way when, I, when I'm doing the work myself, that's, that's just my way of reminding myself that these two answer choices were crossed out for a different reason. Had I crossed out two answer choices for the same reason, I would have used the same symbol. Like maybe like that. It's a small thing but it helps, it keeps your work organized. And then when I cross out something else for a different reason, I use different symbol. Or maybe like that. Some different symbol. That tells me that these answer choices, these two were crossed out for the same reason, this one was crossed for a different reason, this one was crossed out for a different reason. So, uh, it's, not, it's not C. Which means, we're down to A and B, which simply means that mode, here's our mode, here's our median, here's our mean, which is answer choice A. Here's our mode, Here's our mean, and here's our median. These are the only two possibilities. These are the only two possibilities. I'm going to pick up the speed here right now, which means the mean is mode is 18 and median is 19, which means the mean is either between 18 and 19 somewhere, or mean is something more than 19, because median is 19. Let's pretend. Let's pretend. that mean is 20. The reason I put this word in capital letter is to make you understand that that is all we are doing. We are going to pretend that it is 20 and we are going to see if it works out or not. If it doesn't work out then the answer would have to be B. Let's pretend, it, let's pretend that the mean is 20. Because that is my hunch. My hunch is that mean is 20 because other than these 6, 11 people, you see half the people if you, this is the cutoff here, half the people are more than 20. Well, nine of them actually. 11 of, 11 of them are 6, 18 year old, 19 year old, but all the other nine people are putting the average up. So I don't think the mean is going to be between 18 and 19. It is more than 19. It's most likely 20. Let's do the work, shall we? So we're going to pretend that it is 20 and see how it works out. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not in the I'm not in the mood to actually sit, uh, pick up the calculator and do all do the actual work in the classical way. So here we go. So if the mean is if the mean is in fact 20, which we do not know yet, but if it is in fact 20, then we have six people here who are 18 year old, which means every one of them is two years short, two years short than the mean. They are pulling the average down by two years, each of them, and there are six of them, which means we have a deficit of 12. We have a deficit of 12 years. Here we have five people and they are each 19 year old. The mean is 20, which means they're pulling the average down each one of them by one year. We have a deficit of five. We have a deficit of 17. Here we don't have to worry about it because there are four people, they're all 20, and the average is 20, they're carrying their weight. Now we're going to look at the surplus, and if the surplus takes care of the deficit, then the mean is mean is in fact 20. Do you understand? So we have two. We have two people that are 21 year old, we have a surplus of two years because they are one year older than the mean. Here you have one person only who is 22 years old, we have a surplus of two. Here we have one person who is 23 years old, we have a surplus of three. And here we have one person who is 30 years old, if the mean is in fact 20, this guy is contributing 10 extra years to the mean to pull it up. We have a surplus of 10. This is 17. If these figure up to add up to 17, then we are in business. 2 plus 4 is 4. There you go, 4 plus 3. There you go, it checks out. The mean is 20, the answer is A. Answer is A, mean is in fact 20. The mode we found out was 18, and the median was in the middle at 19. Let's look at number 18.
But if you want to do it on, do it in the classical way and you want to pick up the calculator, you know, be my guess. I find that very annoying. Here we're looking at predicted predicted percentage remaining at 2 degrees centigrade. And the graph that is given to us is looks something like this. This is the temperature and this is the percentage remaining. What it is that is remaining, we really don't care about that. And the graph looks something like this. And we have a negative 10 degrees here. We have a negative 5 degrees here. We have 0 degrees here and so on and so forth. We are interested in, oh this is negative, negative 2. Positive 2 degrees? That's what I have written in my notes here. No, it is negative 2 degrees, even though in my notes it says it is negative 2 degrees. It is negative 2 degrees. Okay, so listen carefully. So they tell us, they give us a marker here, they give us a precise marker. There's a marker here, I did not put here, but there's a precise marker here, halfway between 0 and negative 5, if you look at the, if you look at the book, which is why which is why it's important that you have the book in front of you, because it helps to have the book in front of you. There's a precise marker between negative 5 and 0, which would be negative 2.5. And, and if you go up to here, that is slightly more than 70. I'm making too much fuss. We're not interested in negative 2.5. Negative We're not interested in negative 2.5. We want negative 2 degrees. Negative 2 degrees can be slightly to the left here, but slightly to the right here. And you go up here, and you go down, and you will find that it is 70%. The answer is 70%. The answer is C. Just make sure that you look at the negative 2 degrees and not positive 2 degrees, which, which is what I was about to do by mistake. That was number 18. Let's look at number 19. In number 19, we are told that the range of a graph that is shown here is less than or equal to 4. In other words, the values of y, the y, the maximum value of y that we can have here is 4. y cannot be more than 4. And the zeros, zeros of f are negative 3 and positive 1. The zeros of f is same as saying the x-intercept. In other words, the so y is equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 3 and positive 1. Let's, our job is to simply pick the one that corresponds to these two conditions among the four graphs. Let's look at answer choice A. Answer choice A, they give us something like this. There you go. This is positive 1, this is negative 3, so it meets the first condition of negative 3 and positive 1. And then if you look here, the highest it goes is 4. This is the highest. It meets both of the condition. A seems fine. A seems fine. Now very quickly I'm going to go through B, C and D to show you why B, C and D are wrong. But the answer is A. Because it meets both the conditions. B is wrong because it crosses at the wrong places. It, cr it, 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 crosses, it, it crosses the x-axis at negative 1 and a positive 3. We don't want negative 1 and positive 3. We want the other way around. B is wrong. What is wrong with C and D they both have the same same problem. What's wrong with the C is that, let's first draw the graph. So as you can see, it does cross the x-axis at the right point, but the problem is that the maximum value, the maximum value that the graph is supposed to have, the function, function rather is supposed to have, the range has to be less than or equal to 4. So if you draw a 4 here, y is equal to 4, it doesn't start there. The bloody thing just keeps on going. The range here is more than 4. That's no good. And the same thing happens with D. The range is more than 4. Same exact thing happens with D. The only difference is that the only difference is that the shape is different. Let's not worry about what the x-intercepts are, because there is no point in worrying about the x-intercept, it doesn't even meet the first condition. So it's the first condition we're talking about. In D, the range is more than 4. I'm 
I'm going to quickly put here on the blackboard what the shape looks like. So it looks something like this. That's close enough. It doesn't have to be precise, that's close enough. And then this part, the highest part, it reaches here, right here. If you want to so somewhere here, I don't know where the x axis, y, y axis is. As I said, it makes no difference. So let's draw here y axis. This is y is equal to 4. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop at y equal to 4. It just keeps on going. The range is more than 4. The answer is, answer choice D is also wrong. The answer to this problem is A. That was the end of that page. That was the end of that page. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll pick up where we left off. In the meantime, as I said before, if you wish to get hold of me, if you want to talk to me, send me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? I know.